Welcome to the Joy of Music. Today we bring you a special presentation from the National Museum from music boxes to street organs of Utrecht, Holland, with host Diane Bisch and special guest Dr. Jan Haspels. Now, Diane Bish. the playing of the old hundredth and as you can see this organ doesn't need me or any other organist because it is a barrel organ and it plays by itself just like all the other instruments in this museum from tiny musical clock to barrel organ to church organ one of the most unique museums in all the world is in Utrecht Holland the Spale clock museum in the museum today the director, Dr. Jan Jaap Hospels, will be our guide in this most unique and wonderful place. Dr. Haspels, we're, we're standing in the Spale Clock Museum. Can you tell us what a Spale Clock really is? A Spale Clock is literally um, a clock that spales, that plays, plays music in fact, and we in Holland apparently have been quite good at making these things. Right in the Middle Ages we started making big drums up in the church towers with pins to program the music of the carillons of the Low Countries. And the whole development right up to the um, automatic street organs that also have a program is in many respects typically Dutch. And that's why there is a National Institute, a National Museum of Automatic Musical Instruments. But these carillons, program drums, well, here you see a good example, are generally repinnable. You see there are regular holes. Tiny in the little pins in the cylinder. Yes. This is really a scaled-down edition, you might say, of the large carillon up in the dome or wherever. And by putting them in place, you get the music ring out from the bells. This clock has a um, little bit of music by handle called Piece for a Musical Clock. And Which handle actually wrote for a clock? Oh yes, you see, if you make this clock play the well, whatever piece from the Messiah, it's really silly because that wasn't meant to be sounded on a clock. But if you have music really intended for these automatic musical instruments, it becomes very relevant indeed. Now on bells, of course, broken chords and all that will do very nicely, as you hear here. This is a piece handle wrote in the 1730s. Can you show us more clocks like this? I think so. The principle, of course, of a program drum or another program is always there. This is, in fact, an early bell type playing clock. But here, for instance, you have the same a musical program, but now playing on a musical comb. And at the same time, it 
A musical comb? Yes. And I'm, I must admit that we in Holland didn't invent it. That was the Swiss. Uh -huh. But um, the Swiss musical comb playing um, instrument, the musical box, in fact, was quite often incorporated also in this type of clock. At the same time, the boat starts sailing. There is even water flowing down, and the hummingbirds jump about in the trees. And it all happens and works to the accompaniment of the music. You see them flitting to and fro. That's operated through the branches of the tree. There is the water. I do like the proportions of the ship and the birds particularly. But then they have been imported from France. This generally happens at the hour again and then the clock um, strikes. This is the inside of a clock. Um, we would not see these inner workings. No, normally you wouldn't. They would be housed in clocks, cabinets, um, that would take on the, the normal styles of furniture, as we call them, Louis XV, Louis XVI, Rococo, says Empire Neoclassicism. And um, this would be hidden, but still, it's a sort of, you might say, gramophone of some two centuries ago. Now, it seems that these melodies are sometimes faster than real hands could play. Um, yeah, that is quite often there is something very striking about them and that they, they seem to be faster. I don't think their speed as such is faster, but what does happen is that they play things the human hand cannot possibly perform. Um, well, this cylinder, which is a simple 18th century melody with a series of variations by Mozart, it says here, Tiroler Lied, um, gevarieerd door Mozart. It will come to a variation, for, inst for instance, where you have, um, I think you call them demi-semi-quavers, mm -hmm. running up in parallel thirds at a terrific speed, while the melody simply continues, and you just can't play it by hand. And this was written specifically for this instrument yes. by Mozart. This was a, one of these specific arrangements, or set of variations, because also the cylinder doesn't simply rotate, but during its rotation it moves sideways. You get a sort of helicoid spiral. Um, thereby, it can play some five minutes. Why would Mozart have written, taken his time to write music for a clock like this? Ah, uh, well, I think um, there, was, there is a letter Mozart wrote um, where he says, um, I've well, uh, I've arranged music for a flute clock or a flute cabinet. And then he continues to say how silly he thinks it sounds. Es klingt ganz elend und pleierisch, or something like that. Aber, and then comes the reason, es gibt mir immerhin et welche Dukaten für meine liebe Constance. It brings in some household money for my dear Constance. Aha. Let's hear it. You see, it starts pumping up its air now. That's melody. Look, here it goes again. 
You see? Now, Diana, watch out. The next uh, variation is impossible for instance to play here, this one. This is quite beyond the human hand. Well, this looks like a regular upright player instrument or piano. Why would it be in a collection of barrel organs? Ah, um, it does look up till here sort of regular, but if you see the top, you can see there is something funny about it. And even here, if I open this, you can see that there is a musical program in it. Just like a player piano. Oh yes, that is the first reason it is here. It is a programmed musical instrument. The special thing about it is that the program does not only take care of the playing of the keys, but also of, um, you might say, a string quartet. It is an orchestrion. There is a set of violins up here. And these violins are being operated or programmed by the information on the paper. There is a rotating bow with an endless diaphragm of horsehair in the inside. Um, the violin that has to be played comes forward, the string is played. These are the fingers, a chromatic series of fingers. Right, that one there has got most fingers. That's the soprano, the E string particularly, that has to get up highest. There is a sensuous vibrato for the long notes. This. It really comes out like anything. And you will also see that the paper roll programs the speed of the rotation of the bow and also the pressure on the strings to make it very lifelike indeed. Let's hear it. Right. Um, I think when I put it on, I must do a bit of tuning. But um, you'll see now everything getting into action by an electrical motor. Thank you. 
It's a noisy number, isn't it? It was noisy, all right, but then it has an electrical motor, and that was considered, mind you, 1910, this is, um, to be quite something to have um, electricity in the home. And that is also why these lamps are here. They've got little electric bulbs to underline extra. We've got electricity uh -huh. get, that, getting the stuff going. You that know? was as new as the instrument itself. Absolutely, and therefore this electrical motor, who does the vacuum pumping to operate the whole mechanism, was considered to be something, well, you wouldn't be ashamed of at all. Mm. But as it is, well, the barrel organs are, in that respect at least, far less noisy, because you have to operate them by hand. And I think if we go now to the next room, you'll see that the instruments there produce a lot of musical noise, but technically it's a bit more quiet, really. Dr. Haspels, we've seen the Dutch street organs. Can you tell us a little bit about how they work and how the music is, is made? Yes, and with pleasure. This is a very small type, and um, this, of course, is the front, as you can see, but it is also um, a useful demonstration bit because it tells exactly how it works. Um, now, in every street organ, if you turn the wheel, you do two things. You pump air for the um, bellows, so there is a sort of crankshaft pumping air tf, 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 like that, ge generally a double sort of feeder bellows. And at the same time, you wind the musical program through the keyframe. You see here are little keys. Now, if they stand up, the pipe that goes with them is open. Now they're all up. So if I produce um, wind pressure now, it will escape through all the pipes simultaneously. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All playing at one time. <laughs> yes, well, this, at least in this museum, we don't consider to be music. But um, now, if you put on a program, look, here comes a program. This is the music in the book. Oh, yes, this is the music. And we have made it, um, I think it's a nice program, because first there is nothing, all the keys are closed. Uh -huh. Then up, up comes one key, two, two, two. And here, repeated, and here, this is a third, at the same time, I can't uh -huh. sing that. Here, a triad, and here, well, you can imagine what this sounds like. Uh -huh. Exactly, ending in a chord already, mm -hmm. because you see, here is what might develop into a waltz, a low note, and twice a chord. Exactly, and here comes to accompany the hum papa, or rather the hum papa to accompany that. Counter melody even. Ah. It's a trill here, and well, that's how the thing develops. You see, now I put it in. Down go all the keys. If I turn now, nothing happens. Now comes the first bit of information. Once more, long, repeated, a third, a triad. And other bit you are singing. Um papa. And the melody. Now, is this great organ here the same as the little one? Um, well, it is a bit bigger, but in principle, it is exactly the same. You see a series of pipes, but you see that these pipes are different from these brass things here. This is a stop, this is another stop, yet other stops behind it, S um, small pipes, large pipes, or even bass pipes, trombones, um, 16 foot, 8 foot, 4 foot, and all these stops can come in by means 
of a book like here, there are special keys that say, add the reed stop, the trumpet, the bourdon, the whatever. The different kind of stops. The little paper tells them to add them or take oh, them yes. off. What you, when you play the organ, do by hand, pulling out a stop or pushing it in again, that is, ha is done here by little holes in the paper, telling one stop to flip out or come back again. And so you actually play this one by hand, too. Oh, yes, but you have... I, I, I wouldn't mind at all letting you have a go, but you really must spit on your hands to really get the thing going. I'll do the best I can. Jolly good. Is this it? That's it. Now you have to really get going. Yes, go ahead. That's it. <laughs> Excellent. You made a marvelous job of it. <laughs> That's hard work. Well, you almost <laughs> did like a Dutchman. Splendid. Dr. Haspels, this is obviously an organ with hundreds of pipes. Now, how would they program music for this? Which pipes played what? And which well, for hundreds of pipes, um, there are not hundreds of keys. So there is only a small limit, a limited number of keys, but also a number of stop keys. And they tell the organ, as you would do on, on a manually played organ, I need this stop or that stop, or push it back again. Here you see, for instance, a stop of pipes, um, open principle type mm -hmm. pipes. Here is a percussion stop. It's also playable from the same keys, but then the keys are being told not to play the pipes, but the xylophone. There is a sort of octave range there. And this is still happening in those little cards with the holes in them? Oh yes, uh -huh. very much so. There are only, for instance, eight holes for the bases, uh -huh. but these eight bass holes can be played either on a stopped 16 foot, you can't see the pipes, they run the length under the organ, they're very large of course, or for instance here, these are four trombones, 16 foot reeds, to produce very deep bass notes again. And it is, you might say, um, a two manual organ. This all is the melody, the pipes on that side, and symmetrically here is the counter melody. So you can play your melody here and your counter melody there. That's a real orchestra. It is a real orchestra and it has one advantage over the church organ that it has percussion. Uh -huh. You see there is there are the rhythmic nuances like the castanet, there is the small drum, there is the triangle, and um, well, there is, of course, also this xylophone, but here you have the, the big drum, and behind it a cymbal. These have all got separate keys, so I can program music, counter melodies on various stops, and combined with all sorts of percussion effects, and that makes for grand music. Let's sit back and listen.
with the sound of this wonderful barrel organ in our ears, we say goodbye from the Spale Clock Museum in Utrecht, Holland. Our guide has been museum director, Dr. Jan Jaap Haspels. See you next week. Joining us today on the Joy of Music. Diane Bish and the Joy of Music wish to thank Lufthansa German Airlines for their support in helping to make this program possible.